line is the portion about Abraham making his servant swear an oath to him before he sends him off. I think this is such an important thing because, I guess because of what I've been going through lately and what my week has been like, this really spoke to me. He was adamant that Isaac not be given a wife from the foreign people, from the people of Canaan. And he also, he also would not let Isaac go back to where they had come from and dwell there because that was in question. The, the, I'm actually not remembering it right now, but I think the servant maybe brought up the fact that you know, he could just go back there permanently. But that wasn't an option for Abraham because he said, no, God has promised me this land. I am supposed to be here. This is the divine right that's been given to me. Uh, this is where God is leading my family is to multiply in this place. So there's no way we're going to go back to where we came from. And where I came from was the Babylonian Assyrian area of the world that was full of idol worship and people who were set against Yahweh. He said, no, uh, I'm going to believe my God and we're going to go forward in this place that he's put us. And that really spoke to me because it can be really easy to turn back and retreat when things are foggy in front of us. When you don't know what's coming next and it's difficult and you don't know where provision is going to come from, it can be really easy to waver and start to question what God has told us. Well, God told me months ago, let go of the rope. In fact, I fasted for seven days when we were living in Maryland to try and figure out God's will for us because I felt like we were supposed to move back to Texas. And uh, yeah, spoiler, we did. <laughs> and at the end of that seven days, as I was out in the woods praying, I heard three times, clearly, let go of the rope. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> no, that was it. <laughs> That's all it gave me. But that was enough. Uh, I thought, okay, what am I hanging on to? Mostly I'm hanging on to the job because I didn't have another job lined up. And I didn't know if you know, I'd be able to make the same amount of money. And I had, you know, bills to pay, I had debts to work on, you know, a family to support. So it was difficult to, to do that. But without having anything else lined up, we decided we're going to do what God said and we're just going to leave. So that's what we did. And it was tough. <laughs> it was really tough. Um, the financial issues were immense. We got taken advantage of by some folks and it was pretty bad. But then we had other people, good people come in and help us out. Um, oftentimes without us even asking and we made it through and we had to ask for a couple thousand dollars from my parents at one point, but God within six months helped us to uh, get in a place where we could pay it back. So it worked out, even though it was really difficult to go through that. And then later on, uh, more than a year and a half after getting a job back at a, a studio like I was working in before, I heard this coming back to me again, let go of the rope. Like, oh, okay, I thought it was about leaving Maryland, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's about just not working for other people anymore. Maybe it's being my own boss and serving the kingdom of God more. So I started wondering about that. And um, we went to this uh, seminar, a, a weekend seminar with Josh Tolley. And on the first day that we were there in the morning, he put up a slide, one of the first slides that he put up. And it was a picture of a guy swinging out over a lake from a rope, letting go of it so he could fly into the lake. And I looked over at Amanda, she looked over at me and we were like, okay. Gotcha. And as it turned out, I didn't even have to let go of the rope myself in this particular instance because two days later, they ended my contract early. <laughs> but the challenging part was not going and looking for another one, not going and finding some kind of full-time employment again, and instead focusing on building up my ministry and being able to be home more and prepare for future family stuff. So 
Uh, I'm in a place now where it's been how many months? Five months since June that I've been out of work, and it's getting it's getting really tough. To be honest with you, you know we're down to the, the dregs of things. But if it was just a, a one moment kind of thing, step out in faith, you know, let go of the rope like I did before, I think it would be easier. Because when I said, all right, Amanda, we're going to leave Maryland, it was almost like the ball had been pushed off of this cliff and it was just rolling downhill now. You know, it had its own momentum. So here, here we go. <laughs> it's set in motion. But right now, it's this day after day thing of stepping out in faith. Okay, I'm not going to go look for another job. I'm going to believe that God's going to bring something. And then somebody donates or some money come in from sales that we weren't expecting. Somebody invites me onto their program so that a bigger audience hears about me and they buy some of my stuff. But man, it's like walking a tightrope. I don't know what's going to happen. And that's exciting, but it's scary. It's scary. And honestly, I've had a couple of times where I just had abject terror and I had to lay down and like stop myself from panicking, you know, slow down my breathing because I have a family to support, you know, and I'm just, I just cry out, God, are you going to provide? I got to take care of my family. And, and every time I do, he, he says, peace, peace. I take care of all of my kids. He takes care of all of his kids. But I I have to keep myself from looking back. I just got to crank my head back this way and keep looking forward at what God has told me to go towards in faith. I want to read a verse from Luke. It's Luke 9, 62. Some people have been coming to Yeshua as he's starting his ministry and they've been asking to follow him. And he says, okay, we'll go do this first. And they say, oh, no, I can't. And somebody else will come and say, oh, I want to follow you. And he says, okay, well, go ahead and follow me then. And he says, I have to go bury my dead. Yeshua says, no, don't worry about that. Just come follow me. I'm on a mission. We're moving forward. Come on. We're moving forward. We're doing something here. There's not a lot of time. I'm getting to it. Are you going to follow me or not? A guy decided he had to go do something with his family. And then another guy comes and says, I want to follow you. Okay, do it. Well, let me go say goodbye to my folks first and my people at home. Yeshua says, nope, we're moving on. You see, if we don't take advantage of the opportunities that God has put in front of us right now, we may not have them again. Yeshua is moving forward. His kingdom is progressing. He's doing some things. And if we don't get in on that now, are we going to ever get in on it? Is there going to be that choice again that God put before us? Maybe, maybe not. Well, this is a verse 62 that I wanted to read. Yeshua ends this portion saying, no one who puts his hand to the plow and keeps looking back is fit to serve in the kingdom of God. When you plow a field, and this is something I actually had to research because I've never plowed a field. I'm a city slicker. You have to look down to the end of the field and keep your eyes on a point that you're heading towards. Because if you don't, and you're looking around or looking back to see the line that you've already made, you're doing this back and forth as you plow. And you won't be able to have a field because it'll just be wavy lines crossing each other. You got to have straight furrows. And the only way to do that is to keep your eyes on the goal and head straight for it. Don't look back. That's what God is teaching me right now. I don't want to be like that. And I don't want you to be like that either. But it's easy because we're familiar with where we came from. Think about all the times that the Israelites complained to God and to Moses out in the wilderness because it was scary. They didn't know where their provision was coming from. They didn't know where the the water was the next time they were going to find a place with water. They didn't know where that food was going to come from. You know, God said even their clothes didn't wear out 
at that point because they had no way to get new clothes. And yet they were worried about all these things because they thought they were thinking about their life in Egypt. Hey, we've got to make clothes for ourselves. We've got to provide food for ourselves. God says, I didn't bring you out here to let you die or perish or go without clothes. Am I a good God? You know, is he a good father or not? We got to believe that when he calls us to something, he's going to provide in that situation. And the Israelites could not get the hang of that. And it really made Moses and God angry. I don't want to make my Lord angry like that. I want to believe that he is going to provide, that he is good, and that the goal he's called me to is a promised land worth working towards, even if I'm not there yet, even if I'm in the wilderness. And hey, maybe I never get there. Maybe my descendants get there like Abraham. Maybe God is setting something up through me that's going to become major world impacting and life changing later. Not to say that he can't do some things now, but it could grow into something amazing later. All I can do is stand in the place of trust in my father and believe he's going to come through and stop looking back because it's going to happen. Amen.